Hey guys, Wet Movie One back here again for another Blu-ray DVD update video for you guys today. It's been about two weeks or so since my last one. Got a big old stack of goodies here to talk to you guys about today. But before I get to the first one, give this video a thumbs up if you guys like my videos. If you don't like my videos, you can thumbs them down. It doesn't matter. But let me know down below what kind of cool new movies you guys picked up on your hoarding ventures over the last couple of weeks. I would like to know, especially if it's a, something cool, you know. Let me know down in the comments. But guys, let's get on over to the first movie here from Scream Factory. I'm very excited to talk about this one here because I'm a big, I'm a fan uh, of the franchise. I even have uh, the, the very, very first one, a uh, special edition on DVD signed by Tony Todd himself, Candyman. But it's cool to finally get uh, the, the, the second one, the sequel here on Blu-ray. And uh, I'm, I've, like I said, I've been a fan of the Candyman movies since like the early 90s when I first saw them. Even a friend of mine has a cameo in, in, you know, in the first film, Eric Edwards. And uh, in this one, uh, Candyman is now in New Orleans, and he's he's like you know kind of after this school teacher because the school teacher uh, is she kind of has ties to to the Candyman past, and uh, her, this teacher's brother is in jail for committing supposedly committing Candyman murders, and uh, there's this kid in uh, this lady's class that draws pictures of Candyman because that's all he can think about, that's all is in his mind, and to to tell the kid you know she one day she has to tell the kids, Candyman doesn't exist. You know what I mean? And she has to prove it to them by saying his name five times in the mirror. And of course, when she does, she stirs up all this craziness and Candyman or Tony Todd comes out and starts doing his craziness again. And uh, that's, that's pretty much the synopsis of this movie. Um, I, I always like this sequel because it get, it delves more into the past of Candyman and, you know, why he's out there on the rampage killing. Because, he you know, he was like a slave or his parents were slaves and he fell in love with this white woman and that was kind of like forbidden back in the day until these people, in the, you know, in, in the small town, you know, cut off his hand and threw honey on him and, and had all these bees attack him and things and that's how he kind of you know became the evil that he is today this is not the greatest sequel in, in the in, you know in the planet when it comes to you know horror movie sequels I, I always loved the first one it's, the first one was more of like a mystery thriller kind of film and this one's more in the slasher vein you know in my opinion but uh, if you guys are a fan of Candyman and, you know, Tony, and Tony Todd and stuff you guys all know from like Final Destination and uh, Night of the Living Dead the remake and stuff like that I, I've always I've always liked him in films he always has like a you know a good uh, presence on screen but the cool thing is about this blu-ray here you get a, you get the movie in 1080p it looks very nice on uh, on blu-ray here but you also get an interview on here with Tony Todd talking about the legacy of Candyman and how even now when he goes out you know super in, you know to the supermarket Market to buy food, people are looking at him and saying, "Daddy, that's Candyman over there." You know, stuff like that. Just a, you know, like a probably I think it was like a twenty-minute interview with Tony Todd, just talking about the pretty much the legacy of, of Candyman, which I thought was cool. And there's another interview on here uh, with one of the actresses talking about the the film and stuff too. But you also get a commentary on there with the director himself talking about the film. But if you're a fan of Candyman, this one that you guys all know, you can get Farewell to the Flesh right now at this at Scream Factory's website. Uh, but next up over here uh, from Disney, and I got this one at, at Best Buy the, the, the day it came out. I was trying to look for the steel book, and I'm like, I couldn't find it, and I didn't get to see it in the movie theater, and I heard all this hype about this film. So I just finally had to check it out for myself, and that is Gar Guardians of the Galaxy here on Blu-ray, starring Dave Bautista, the dude from WWE, and uh, Chris Pratt and stuff like that, and Zoe Saldana. And it's pretty much about this one guy named Star-Lord, played, played by Chris Pratt. He's kind of like a guy who goes around the galaxy you know, collecting things and trying to sell them to make money and stuff. Until one day he comes across this one item that a lot of people want. You know, like that, that really desire it. Even some evil people. And uh, it's him trying to, you know, keep it, you know, trying to figure out what he's going to do with it. And then he kind of sort of, you know, bumps against these uh, these other guys like Groot and uh, uh, Zoe Saldana's character and stuff like that. And they kind of form this, you know, group called the Guardians of the Galaxy trying to protect this one item and stuff like that. I thought it was kind of cool. You know what I mean? I'm not going to get into the story and be all crazy and talk, you know, talk forever about it. Um, I thought it was really kind of cool. It's not my favorite superhero movie at all or anything like that. I still love Iron Man. I love the Hulk. But I, I found this one to be very, very 
enjoyable, liked it a lot. But the cool thing is about this one, the guy that directed this movie, James Gunn, got his start in making trauma movies back in the day. I believe his first film that he made for trauma that you know that got any any not, you know, notoriety was uh, Tromeo and Juliet uh, back in the day. And he's also made another trauma movie uh, called Lolly Love which I, I actually really like a lot too, that no one, no one ever really talks about. It's just kind of cool how he went from trauma to making, you know, a big Marvel movie that went to theaters. I, I, I really hope, you know, for his, for his sake that he, you know, really, you know, goes on to bigger and better places with this film because he did a very, very good job with this one. But that's Guardians of the Galaxy. I highly recommend it. Thought it was really kind of cool. All right, guys, and next up from Warner Brothers is The Good Lie here on Blu-ray starring Reese Witherspoon, who you guys all know from Legally blonde and things like that. Um, this movie is based on a true story about about these young people that live in the Sudan back in the early 80s when there was this war going on between the, uh, the South and the North, I believe, like this little civil war that's going on over religion and how these young people had to, you know, flee their towns or, or they were going to be murdered, like young women, you know, young children, you know, boys and girls had to go over a thousand miles to try to find a refugee camp to find safety as, you know, or, or they'll die. And it's about a, a group of these people that uh, find this refugee camp and have to live there for 10 years and until, until, Amer until some of these Americans that are working at this refugee camp start up this program and send a, send a handful of these people um, over to America to start new lives, you know, in America. And uh, this movie just follows a, follow, you know, follows a group of these uh, refugees and how, you know, they had a hard life as, as you know, young people and now now they're in America with this big culture shock and try to figure out like what what is a car you know what is a cell phone you know like how how what we take for granted every day they're learning new for the first time and them trying to get a, a you know get a get a job you know get order pizza and have food delivered to them because but where they lived before they had to like kill to what they had to like you know kill an animal to get what they want to eat or, you know, go a thousand miles, like a hundred miles to get to like a place with water, you know, stuff like that. I thought this movie was absolutely wonderful. I saw it twice already since I got this Blu-ray, once with my, once by myself and once with my mom. I just thought it was a very, very well-told story, very well put together. It says it stars Reese Witherspoon. She's only, she's in the film, but it mainly focuses on the Sudanese, uh, uh, the, the, the Sudanese actors that they got in this movie which the people in this film actually went through what the characters went through in this film as, as kids in, in, you know, in the Sudan and how they had to deal with all this craziness that was happening in their lives and living in you know refugee camps and things which I found out in the special features and I thought that was just a, a very interesting thing to know that the director of the film really wanted real Sudanese refugees to be in the film to portray themselves on screen. And I thought, I thought this movie was absolutely wonderful. It's, it's probably one of the better movies I've seen in, in probably in, in the last couple months, man. I, I, I can't recommend this, you know, anymore. If you guys love good gripping like drama stories give this one a watch guys it's very well put together i i loved it very much it's a good lie here on blu-ray and uh next up over here from paramount is another film i was very interested in seeing because i have always loved the director's work ever since uh i saw his uh, one of his first films uh slacker and he also made days to confuse and another film that i really love uh suburbia is that stars giovanni Rabisi, you know a, a coming of age story which i've always loved and this is his new film and this uh, that is Boyhood here on Blu-ray, starring Ethan Hawke and uh, Patricia Arquette and things like that, and a couple of unknowns um, in this film. And it, it's, it's pretty much a, a movie that follows, a, a, it's a coming-of-age movie that follows the life of this one young boy, you know, from from age six, you know, till he graduates high school and all the trials and tribulations that happen in someone's life you know, over that course of, you know, of, of that time. But the most interesting thing about this film is that it was shot over a period of 12 years with the same people. Like, you see this actor here as a six-year-old boy, and, you know, once a year for like three days a year, they shot they shot this movie over that course of the time. So you actually see these actors, you know, grow up and grow old at the same time. Like Ethan Hawke, you know, how he ages through the film and the, the kids in the film age. I thought it was just a very interesting way that they shot this movie. And I, I, I just absolutely fell in love with this one the first time I saw it at the movie theater. And on this Blu-ray here, um, you get a Q&A with uh, Richard Linkletter and the, the cast of the movie talking 
talking about the experiences they had. And they filmed this uh, Q&A at the Cine Family in Los An in L.A., uh, this, the silent movie theater. And they had a couple, had a, a couple of audience members asking them questions on how they did it and what they did and how they feel about the film. And you also get a, a behind-the-scenes look on here, which is like 20 minutes long, you know, talking about the process and how it was shooting a film for, you know, once a year, you know, for a couple of days a year for over 12 years, and how, you know, he was trying to piece together the movie, you know, throughout this whole time to, to see where he was, he was going to go with it. And I thought it was just a very, very uh, fantastic movie. It's one of those ones, I don't think a lot of people are, are going to really get into it. It's one of those ones that for trails, you know, really true cinephiles like myself will really dig movies like this, because the movies were like 164 minutes long. It, it, it is kind of a long one. It's one of those ones... For a lot of you guys out there, I don't think it will have a whole lot of rewatch value to it. But if you're a true, true film fan, I think you guys will totally dig this movie. But that's Boyhood here on Blu-ray. Looks fantastic on Blue. Love this movie very much. And uh, this next one up over here is from Sony. It's a film that I, I kind of sort of wanted to see because I like Chloe Grace, Chloe Grace Moretz. And I love Denzel Washington. He can do no wrong. And this one right here is The Equalizer here on DVD. This is a, a, a new, a, his, his new flick. And in this movie, he's like a, just a regular guy. He works his, you know, his regular job going to like, you know, work, he, works, he works at like a Home Depot kind of a store. You know, he's like a, a nice guy that helps out people a lot and stuff. And he sees this one girl that keeps coming into this coffee shop, you know, in the middle of the night when he's like, you know, just, you know, relaxing and reading a book. And she's like, she's, she's a street walker. She kind of, you know, sells herself for money. And she's played by Chloe Grace Moretz, who we guys all know from Kick-Ass and things like that. Until, you know, they strike up this little relationship with each other over a period of time. Until one day, something really bad happens to her. And she, she goes into this hot, you know, into the hospital. And when he finds out that something happened to her, it's pretty much him trying to do anything he can to, you know, get back at the people that hurt this girl. And because he, he has a really super dark past and you have to watch this movie to find out. And I thought this movie was really cool. I think Denzel really delivered in this film. And I really, I was really hoping Chloe Grace Moretz was going to be in it a little bit more. Because when you, you see her in the, after the thing happens to her and stuff, you don't really see her that much anymore. And it pretty much focuses on Denzel just, you know, kicking the bad guy's butts for the rest of the movie. Um, I thought it was a very well-paced film, except for the middle half. Really kind of got kind kind of slow in my opinion, but the beginning and the and the last part of the film was really badass in my opinion. I really did enjoy the equalizer here. Alright guys, and next up is a documentary film that I was really kind of interested in seeing because I'm a big fan of horror movie conventions and just conventions in general. And this is a documentary about horror conventions and it's called Phantasm here on a DVD. Not Phantasm as in Phantasm like the Sphere and the Tall Man, but Phantasm with an, you know, with an N over here. And this is a documentary about a guy named Kyle. He's like making this project, uh, you know, just to, to show how it is to go to conventions and, you know, show your, you know, to show your support and love for a genre of movies that, you know, not a lot of people in everyday life talk about. You know what I mean? Like people that like horror movies like myself and a lot of you others may feel a little weird, you know, sometimes for liking certain things, especially in certain crowds of people when you're, t you know, talking to them. Like, hey, did you guys see the new, you know, Freddy movie or the new Nightmare on Elm Street flick? You know, some people will be like, yeah, that's weird. You like that shit as much as you do. But, like, it's cool when you go to conventions and talk to other people that like it as much as you do. And that's what this documentary is. It's about this guy named Kyle that goes to all these different horror conventions over a course of a year, year and a half or so, and filming different interviews with like Tom Atkins and uh, Heather Lightning Camp, who you guys all know from Nightmare on Elm Street, Tuesday Night from the Nightmare on Elm Street series, Joe Lynch that I believe did the Wrong Turn 2 movie, you know, like a handful of different celebrities in here talking about conventions and what they what it means to them and why they keep going and why they're addicted to going to these conventions. I just thought this was a really cool uh, short. It's only like 55 minutes long, but it, it was a it was an entertaining it really was entertaining to me because I love going to conventions and stuff. And if you guys have never been to a convention, this is a documentary that you would probably want to watch just to get a feel of how it is to go if you especially if you if you've never been to one. And this is a film that's also got, you know, raised money to be made on Kickstarter. It's one of those, you know, Kickstarter flicks, but 
you know, this really felt like a passion project, you know, from the guy that made this. You know what I mean? Like, he really wanted to show the experience. Like, he showed some panels. He showed, you know, what it looks like at the cons. He showed, you know, interviews with the celebrities that, he's, that he got there. It's just a very, very fun, uh, you know, uh, documentary about horror conventions. I was really surprised I didn't see any of my YouTube friends on here, like the Dead Pit guys. Like, you know, pretty much any of you guys that go to these conventions all the time, like, to be interviewed or something. It was really kind of weird. I was even looking in the background, trying to see if I see any of my friends in these things, you know? But uh, if you guys want, want to check this one out, it's really kind of cool. I'll have a link for it uh, to the website where you can pick it up down below, where, where you see the name of the title of the film. But if this sounds up your alley, make sure you guys check it out. It's really, really cool. And uh, next up over here from Lionsgate is a film you guys all know I had to check out, because I'm a probably one of the biggest fans of Kevin Smith ever. Cause I, I love Clerks, I love Chasing Amy, I love Mall Rats, I love everything he's done except Red State. Okay, like I love Red State, but it definitely doesn't have that same vibe as all the other Kevin Smith one has. You know what I mean? He, Kevin Smith over the last year, a couple years, he seems like he's going in a different direction when it comes to his filmmaking style. And uh, the movie I'm talking about today is Tusk here on Blu-ray, starring Justin Long and uh, Michael Parks, who, who was in uh, Kevin Smith's last film, Red State. And uh, I think he's a very strong actor, in my opinion, but this movie uh, is actually w was uh, created on a podcast that he did. That he did I believe it's called Smogcast. With him and his buddy Scott Mosier, one day they're just like talking about like movie ideas, I believe, and then they're like, "Hey, how about a guy, you know, turns a, turns some other guy into a walrus, and you know, and they, they they go from there and they, you know, spin off their ideas and then they turn it into a movie." And I thought that was really kind of cool. And it's pretty much about a podcaster played by Justin Long. He's going out to he's going out to some little little town to get an interview with this like really popular guy that's part of this big viral video that's you know really big at the time. And when he gets down to this small town, he finds out that this this guy that he he, he wants to interview has just passed away, and he's kind of upset about it because he thought this was gonna like be his big chance to get like some sort of big you know name person in his in, in, in on his podcast. He goes into this one bar, kind of upset, and. Uh, he sees this flyer in the in the bathroom that he rips off, you know, looking for like a room, and uh, he comes across Michael Parks' house, and he he goes in there thinking he's just gonna, you know, interview this guy because he seems kind of weird, and he he's he's been on all these different adventures and things like that, but yet to come to find out, Michael Parks has something darker in store for this person that's coming into his house right now. He wants to turn him into a walrus. You know, like, that. that's all I can really say about the flick without ruining it for you. It is very different uh, for Kevin Smith, but, you know, because since we always know him from, like, Jay and Silent Bob and all the goofy comedy, sex joke, you know, kind of stuff. But, you know what? I'm really happy that he's, you know, changing his direction and trying something different. You know what I mean? Like, just like how he started something, you know, when he did Clerks, he didn't know if it was going to go anywhere. He just did it for the passion of it. And the same thing with this one. He, he just did it because he's like, you know what? This sounds interesting. I want to do it. Let's do it. You know, and that's what I like. That's what I like about Kevin Smith. He has the passion, and he just does stuff that he loves. And uh, I, I enjoyed that for that for that reason. It's definitely not my favorite uh, of his movies at all. Mine will have to be the original Clerks film. I love Clerks too. But the cool thing is about this film. If it wasn't for this movie, if this movie didn't get made, we wouldn't be getting a Clerks three in the next year or so. Cannot wait to see Clerks three, man. But that's Tusk here on Blu-ray. Kevin, keep doing what you're doing, man. And if you're watching this, I doubt you are. I would love to be in Clerks 3, even if it's like one line going, leave me alone, butt nugget, or something, you know? Please, please, that'd be amazing. I'm a big fan of yours. But that's Tusk here on uh, Blu-ray. All right, guys, and next up is a biopic film that uh, aired on uh, the, Life the Lifetime channel. And I was just very interested in checking this one out because I'm a fan uh, of this actress. And this is the Brittany Murphy story here on DVD. This is this is like a dramatization of her life and like how she, you know, she grew up like doing commercials and how she always wanted to go to L.A. to, you know, to become a star and how she kind of got her mom to go to L.A. to, you know, to pursue her acting career and uh, how she got the, the role in Clueless and, and other things and then how her, her life kind of spiraled out of control towards the end when, you know, uh, different paparazzi people and the tabloids were saying she was doing drugs and she was really, really, really visiting her mother in the hospital because her mother was, uh, you know, di diagnosed with cancer and things. And it, she, she wasn't really doing drugs, but that's what people said in these tabloids. And it kind of 
screwed up her whole career and Hollywood kind of blacklisted her. So she was only, you know, doing stuff like asylum movies and weird straight to DVD kind of movies. And when she got to that point, she was doing all these, you know, like over the counter kind of drugs like uh, painkillers and, you know, antidepressants and different things like that. I thought this movie was just okay. The lady, the the lady that played Brittany Murphy in the, in, in the film, didn't look anything like her at all, in my opinion. And the acting was just, you know, so so when, when it comes to this. But that's that's what you kind of get with Lifetime movies. You don't expect like Robert De Niro kind of style acting, you know, in, in movies like this. But it was just interesting to me because I've always followed Brittany Murphy's career since like Clueless and you know Girl Interrupted and Drexel, Drexel's Class and a whole bunch of other stuff that she's done. And it was just kind of sad when I found out, you know, she she died, you know, from from drugs in her bathroom and stuff like that. It's just it's just kind of sad. But that's the Britney Murphy story here on a, on DVD. If you guys want to know a little bit more about her, but I, I thought it was okay for what it was. And uh, this next one right here, I was really interested in checking out because you guys all know I like kung fu, martial art flicks, and stuff like that. And this one's from Lionsgate also, and it's called Seven Assassins here on a DVD. Uh, this movie is pretty much about this one kingdom. Their all their gold has gone missing, and the king, the leader of this, you know, of of this army, is like, you know what? I'm gonna send out a select few of my, you know, my guards here to go out and search for my gold and see who actually took it. And these these guys go out there and like, t you know, pretty much terrorize these little this little small town, trying to figure out who took, you know, who has this gold. And the small town that they're messing with is just, you know, quiet people just living their lives, you know, away from all the craziness of, you know, every everyday bullshit. And uh, they get terrorized and get messed with, and until these guys have to fight back against the. King Kingdom, saying, "Hey, you know what? We didn't do this, and we want revenge for you, the people that you killed that was that were in our that was part of our family and stuff like that." And then it's the back and forth between the two. Um, I thought it was kind of cool. The action sequences were pretty badass. But the only thing is, it says it said it's called Seven Assassins. I, I didn't see a group of seven people going around kicking anybody's ass. You know what I mean? Unless I totally missed it or something or miscounted because it seemed like it was just like a whole town, like a whole little, you know, little village going after, you know, these people for messing up, you know, coming into their town, kicking their ass. You know, like I, it said, there's like seven people on the cover, but like there was more than seven people going against the king. It was just it, that, that part of it was really kind of confusing, but hey, I, I can, I can let that go because the fight stuff was kind of cool. But seven assassins here on DVD. And uh, next up over here is a, a weird little like psychological weird horror flick I, I, I kind of enjoyed a little bit and that is called the devil's hand here on DVD it's about these uh, these girls these six girls they were all born on the sixth day on the sixth month and there's this legend uh, about them in the small town that they live in because they, they live I believe like the Amish lifestyle you know like away from all, everyone else during, in, in present day and so there's like this myth among their people so if there's people that you know these girls if there's six girls born on the sixth day on the sixth month on their 18th birthday one of them is going to turn into the devil or like a, a, the, the devil's helper or have like the devil's hand or something and uh you know so, some, something's really bad is going to happen and it's pretty much the town going uh oh they're all, they're all going to be turning 18 soon what are we going to do and of course some of them some of the girls start going missing and you know maybe being murdered or doing what you know doing crazy things and the town's getting crazier and crazier about what's going on but to me, it was it was kind of original, or at least for a straight to DVD kind of title. But this one was kind of cool. It has a was it was it called Jennifer Carpenter in there? The girl, the the lady from um uh the what's it, what's it called the uh, Exorcism of Emily Rose in here playing a mother of one of the girls. You know, if you see it out there, give this one a chance. It was really kind of cool. But that's Devil's Hand here. It was cool. I I enjoyed that one. And uh, next up over here is another found footage film, but this one comes from the After Dark, you know, uh, After Dark Film Festival line, and that is a uh, sanatorium here on a uh, DVD. This this movie is pretty much about a group of like ghost hunters. You know what I mean? Like that they film this show. They're on their they're on their hundredth episode. They're, they're they're trying to find like a new place to go, like a new big creepy place to go, and they find this old like you know abandoned building that used to be like you know. 
for like crazy, you know, crazy people. And then it turned into like a retirement home and what have you. And they're going there for, for a night or two just to film there, see if they can experience anything crazy. And it's just their adventure that they go through when they're, when they're in this place, all the sounds and the weird things that they hear, you know, it's all, you, it's all the generic stuff that you hear and see when, when, when you, when you go into this movie. But to me, it was kind of cool. It was, it was nicely paced. And I, 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 I wasn't bored, bored in it whatsoever. I thought the actors in there were pretty good. And uh, a couple of this, a couple of the things kind of freaked me out a little bit. You know what I mean? Like when they're doing the EVP stuff and someone's in a room, they're going, is anybody here? Help me. You know, like, you know, stuff like that. You're like, holy shit, I heard that. I wasn't on the tape, you know, crazy stuff like that. But if you guys are into found footage ones, this is, this is one of the better ones. You know what I mean? There's a lot of weird, crappy ones. This is one of the better ones. If you see it out there, you know, give it a chance, or at least like red box it or something. It's one of those ones, you know. It was cool, but not like super cool. All right, guys, and next up from Anchor Bay is a film that I saw like two or three years ago at one of these, you know, like like screenings that people can go to and like, you know, do surveys and things like that afterwards, telling people what you thought about the movie. I saw this one years ago before like all the effects were finished, before all the music was all there. And uh, this movie is called Horns here on Blu-ray, starring Daniel Radcliffe, also known as Harry Potter and stuff like that. And in this movie, he's he's really in love with his girlfriend. He he'll die, he'll die for her. He just absolutely loves her until she 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 gets killed. And everyone in this town is blaming him for her murder, but yet he doesn't know who you know who killed his girlfriend or if he if he did it himself until this one day he wakes up and he has horns on his head. For some reason horns, devil horns are growing out of his head and he's like, "What the f what the hell is going on here? Like, all these people are blaming him for his girlfriend's death, and he's just, like, distraught about it. But now he has horns on his head. And now, everywhere he goes, people that he sees are telling him everything, telling him all their insecurities, telling him everything that they, you know, they've done wrong in their lives. He's like, why are you telling me this? And it's all because of the horns. And he uses, he uses this ability that he has now to try to find and solve who killed his girlfriend? You know, and that's pretty much the synopsis of this film. It's one of those ones, it's kind of like a mystery. It's kind of like a, you know, a thriller. It's kind of like a mystery thriller kind of flick with horror elements to it. It, it is enjoyable, but it, it's... It's definitely not amazing, in my opinion. I thought it was shot very well, but I'm on this Blu-ray here. You get, like, a little making of uh, of the film on here, which, you know, was, like, what, 15, 20 minutes long, which was kind of cool. But if this movie sounds interesting to you, give it a chance. I thought Daniel Radcliffe really delivered in this one. It was, it was, it was pretty awesome. But that's horns here on uh, Blu-ray. Something different for him. I liked it. You know, not, like, something that's going to give him any Academy Award nominations or anything, but it, it was fun nonetheless. And this next one right up over here from Millennium is a, is a movie I really fell in love with. And uh, that is Elsa and Fred here on uh, Blu-ray. This one stars uh, Shirley MacLaine and Christopher Plummer. And uh, Christopher Plummer is moving into this new apartment. And her his daughter is, like, really overprotective and has this person, you know, uh, hired to work for him to help cook and clean around the house and stuff like that. He doesn't really want that. It just makes him feel old and, like, he's going to die or something like that. Until Sir Shirley MacLaine, Elsa, and Fred, uh, Christopher Plummer, meet each other because they live across the hall from each other. And it's them struggling up this lovely relationship with one another, having fun, because Elsa is uh, an outgoing person that just has, you know, like, adventures on her mind all the time. It's like, she wants to do all this crazy stuff, but yet, you know, Fred is kind of an older, like, older guy going, I don't know, could we do that? You know, and then, like, kind of, they kind of light up each other's lives and light up the screen, in my opinion, in this film. Really, really give this one a chance, because it's really lovely, especially if you guys like, you know, quirky comedy love story films. I, I really did dig it, especially towards the end. And because there's like there's like a film within a film in, in this movie that um, Elsa plays and loves watching. I don't know if that's really an old Shirley MacLaine movie or if that's some other movie that's like some other actress. Because if if you guys watch this movie, let me know. If, is that an old Shirley MacLaine movie that she's watching of herself that she always loves watching that they talk about throughout the film? Because I, I, I would really like to know. But that's Elsa and Fred on Blu-ray. And uh, next up over here, it's just really, really weird movie. It has like a lot of A-list, you know, celebrities in this film. But it's also one of those ones, when I watched it, I'm like, huh? You know, it was, it was just kind of weird because it was like all over the place to me. And it's called Reach Me Here on, on, on Blu-ray. It starts Sylvester Stallone, Danny Aiello, Tom Berenger, Terry Crews, uh, Danny Trejo, uh, Kara Sedgwick, uh, what's his name, uh, 
Tom size, more like a whole bevy of people in this flick, but like people like Danny Trejo are in the film, like two minutes. And then you even have Darius McCrary in there, the guy that played Eddie Winslow, you know, from Family Matters, in the film, like an, as an extra. You know what I mean? Like, what the... I was like, what, what's, what's going on here? But this movie is pretty much about this uh, motivational guy, this motivational speaker kind of guy that wrote this book a long time ago that, you know, that, to, to motivate people. And now it, it's becoming like a big viral sensation all over the internet, all over the world. And people want to know... Who the, who the person is that wrote this book? Because it's, it's inspired this rapper guy, who, you know, because ne the rapper Nelly is in this flick. It, it inspired him and it inspired some mobsters. It inspired, you know, it inspired a whole group of people. And uh, this movie is just about the, everyone trying to find out who the writer of this book is. It, it just seemed like a big kind of like a, a cluster of a movie. Like, you know, it felt like it fell apart at, at some time. Like, they, had, they probably stopped filming for a while before they got money to film the rest of it. It's just really weird because I don't know how they got Stallone and, you know, Danny Trejo. Danny Trejo does anything these days pretty much. But, you know, like all these people like Danny Aiello, how they get these A-list actors all up in this film that it's just kind of like a weird jumbled mess. But that, that's all I can really say about it. But that's uh, Reach Me Here. And uh, <laughs> next up over here from Cinedime is a, is a flick that I saw, I saw a trailer for a couple of months ago. I'm like, this could be really bad. Like, it looks really kind of cheesy, but like so bad it's good kind of a movie. And it kind of sort of was. And it's called uh, Identical here on uh, Blu-ray. And this one stars Ray Liotta, Ashley, Ashley Judd, Seth Green here. And uh, this movie is about this, this young couple in the 1930s that have twins. And, but yet they can't take care of these twins. And uh, they end up giving one of their kids away to the local preacher because him and his wife can't have a kid. So the, 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 these brothers get split up. One of them becomes a real popular, you know, a, a pop, you know, a rock singer. And the other one come, becomes, wants to become an, an inspiring singer. But yet, you know, they've, they've never met each other. They don't know that the parent, they have the same mom and dad and stuff like that. And it's just like, you know, uh, the one that inspires to be a singer, um, his father kind of wants him to be a preacher just like him, just like him. But yet he's kind of rebelling against his dad and stuff like that. But, uh, this movie just seems really strange to me. It, it felt like they were trying to make an Elvis movie. But without having the rights to any Elvis songs or any like El anything Elvis related, because like the guy that plays the singer plays plays both 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 the characters, and he looks like a I think I read up on it I think he was an Elvis impersonator before he did this movie, and uh, I don't know man this movie was just really strange it's, it is kind of funny seeing Seth Green trying to play twenty something again you know what I mean I think he might be like pushing forty and you know and he's still playing twenty just like he. He was not Can't Hardly Wait or something like that. But, you know, Ray Liotta and Joe Padliano are like the only saving graces in this film. I thought they were absolutely amazing. But this movie, like, time jumps a little bit. And it's kind of, like, all over the place. Like, Ashley Judd doesn't look like she ages whatsoever. But yet, Ray Liotta looks like he's about to die, you know, when, he, when he's at the same age as hers. It's really kind of strange. This movie is just a, a big mess, in my opinion. But I enjoyed it because it was so bad. But that's the identical here on Blu-ray. All right, guys, and next up from Image Entertainment is a is a another found footage horror kind of flick, and uh, that's called The House October Built here on uh, Blu-ray. It's pretty much about a group of these uh, filmmakers wanting to make like a little documentary, going to different haunted houses and just interviewing, uh, you know, different people and asking them different questions and things until they start slowly but surely, you know, finding out certain things about you know different haunted houses. Like there was this there's this uh, myth. Uh, about this one guy that worked at a haunted house for years until one day they found out that this guy, you know, killed his family and then killed himself. And, uh, but yet he used to work at a haunted house all the time. And then they start, uh, you know, slowly uncovering all this other, like, weird stuff about haunted houses until they find out about this, this, this one that, that, that does all this crazy stuff to you and they want to find, they want to find it and, and go there and, you know, and uncover what, what really goes on. And it's just all the craziness that ensues from there, like going to, you know, talking to different people that, you know, you know, work at these haunted houses and some of them are, seem kind of weird. 
you know, sound kind, kind of crazy. Like, they could kill you if they just snapped one day. You know what I mean? That's how it always kind of scared me when it comes to haunted houses. You never really know who the hell works there. You know what I mean? Is there a psychopath that's going to be really popping out of that door? Is there is that chainsaw that's, you know, the chainsaw guy running after me? Does that chainsaw really have a chain on it? And does this guy really want to kill me? You know, kind of thing. That that That's what I got from this movie because I'm always, I've always been kind of scared of haunted houses. Yeah, you never really know if there's really going to be a psychopath there. But this movie is based on a, a documentary film that's actually on this Blu-ray here. And to be honest, I think the documentary is fake too. You know what I mean? Like, I was watching it going... I, I, enjoy, I enjoyed the documentary one more than I enjoyed the actual film itself. It's pretty much the same thing. It's just reenacted and stuff. But uh, if you guys like haunted houses, I think like my friend Jose would probably really get a kick out of this. If you guys love, love Halloween and haunted houses, give this one a watch. It is, it is kind of creepy, but... At the same time, kind of dumb. You know what I mean? If you like to, if you just want to go to see what the, the haunted house looks like, it's cool. But as a as a film as a whole, it was it was just kind of stupid. But the documentaries, it was fake too. But uh, it kind of creeped me out a little bit more than the actual film did. And uh, this last one up over here is is a film I just wanted to check out because I love this guy's music ever since I was a kid. My dad introduced me to his stuff, and I believe I even I think the first time I ever saw him like on video was at the, was on uh, the Woodstock. Uh, the Woodstock movie that came out years ago, I think Martin Scorsese did. And uh, this is called uh, Jimmy, All By My Side here on a DVD. And this is a, a biopic on uh, Jimi Hendrix. But it only follows his life between 1966 and 1967, back back when he was just playing, you know, nightclubs with his band, you know, in, in New York City, when, like, no one's really listening to him. He's just sort of playing there in the background as people talk, you know, with him and his friends and stuff like that, until uh, this one lady that's, like, uh, going out with the Rolling Stones is a uh, lead, lead guy, but, uh, you know, she's like a, a girlfriend of the Rolling Stones, uh, sees him at a nightclub one day and falls in love with him, says, you're going to be the next big thing. And then kind of sort of takes him takes him to London, where he becomes you know the the big icon that he he became. And uh, that that film just chronicles that year in the life of uh, Jimi Hendrix and how he went from nightclub acts you know to to being you know blow up everywhere. And uh, I just thought this film looked like it needed a lot more money to be put behind it because it just seemed kind of cheap in my opinion. You know, it's it's directed by the one of the producers of Twelve Years a Slave, but it's just. I don't know. I, I I was I really got bored with it. Like forty five minutes into it, I'm going. Is anything? Let's so, let something happen here. You know what I mean? It's just him talking to this girl, doing drugs, playing the guitar. It, it felt like there needed to be a lot more substance to this film. You know, I thought the casting of Andre Benjamin uh, as Jimi Hendrix was a was a very good choice. He looks just like Jimmy. But that's Jimmy uh, all by all all by his side here on DVD. If you guys like Jimi Hendrix, listen to his music. You know, watch the old Woodstock stuff. And you don't really need to watch this one. It was just kind of boring. But guys, that's all I have to show you guys today for this Blu-ray DVD update video. Give this video a thumbs up if you guys like my videos. I'll see you guys next time.